Hey everybody and welcome back to my studio in a brand new year. Happy 2020. I want to start this year by thanking everyone who joined me on my journey in 2019. It was an incredible year, something new and exciting. And I want to start off 2020 by taking a look at my favorite images from 2019 and laying out some of the groundwork and goals and dreams for 2020. I hope that you'll join me this year again on an amazing photography journey. And I just can't wait to see what God brings us in 2020. So grab your coffee and let's take a look at some of my favorite images from 2019. Okay, I gotta be honest. I've been a little quiet lately with my photography. You'll notice that this is the first video I'm posting in several weeks, and there was good reasons for that. Some were unavoidable. Client work, family gatherings, the holidays, just being gone all the time. But honestly, it's kind of good sometimes just to take a break. Just put the cameras down. It's okay, you know, if you don't shoot every single day or every single week. Even. It's good to take a break and it's also good to sort of reflect back on what you were doing. That way you can sort of set goals and look at what you learned and go from there and set new goals for this year. And that's what I encourage you to do as I plan to do in 2020. Just today getting my cameras out to set up on the tripod to shoot this video, there was just something that told me, okay, I'm, I'm ready. Just having that camera back in my hands and cleaning up my glass, it just gives me that excitement to be back out in the field and shoot. So maybe you can do the same thing I'm doing now is go through your shots from last year, take a look at what you learned, and then together we can go and set goals for what we really want to do in 2020. So to start with, I've shown this picture a couple times. But how can I not start off by talking about my very first big pano that I shot on Mount Scott in April of 2019. This is the image that really started me on my photography journey. If you'll remember, this is where God really spoke to me and gave me the inspiration to shoot landscape photography in the first place. So no matter how I advance as a photographer, this image will always be special to me because this one was really the first in this journey of mine. The second one I want to share with you again is, wow, just that, that that moment of being out on Lower Mountain Fork and Broken Bow in the spring. This was back when the leaves had just come out on the trees in 2019 and had that lush, vibrant, almost electric green vibrance that you can only get in the spring. And this was just one of those mornings when the fog was uh, slow to rise off the water. I went down there with Cole Hughes and we just waded out in the water a little bit and captured that last bit of golden glow as the rays of sunlight came down through that fog. And so this is always going to be one of my favorite images too. And then traveling in 2019 was fun. I went to Kentucky, went to my hometown, and I talked to one of my friends, Tina Bryant, and got permission from her to sort of use her yard and hillside as an access point to Little Medlick Falls. And I didn't even know this waterfall was this big. I'd always heard about it as a kid. And wow, going down into Little Medlick Falls was amazing. It was dangerous. It was beauty wrapped with danger, as I've talked about in some of my videos. And then just the challenges of framing up a waterfall, I learned a ton about my shutter speed and just getting that, that happy medium between your water not being so silky, it just becomes a fog and having some detail in it. You know, I learned a lot about shooting waterfalls from that day and that outing. Went back there several times and just couldn't get enough of that falls. All right, the next one. This one, I've got to throw in the mix just because I shot this from my drone. 2019, I bought this drone. I wasn't really sure how much I would use it. I ended up loving the Mavic 2 Pro and the camera on it's good enough to use for video and stills. And this was one of the first shots in 2019 that I actually sold a print of. And I just happened to see these clouds. I was mowing the grass. Wasn't planning on doing any photos that day. I had yard work to do, right? 
And so I'm out on my lawnmower and I'm going down on the, the hill towards the west and just these colors exploded in the sky and I just stopped the lawnmower, got out, and I knew I didn't even have time to go over to the pond with my camera. But that's why the drone comes in handy because it's so stinking fast. If you've got it ready to go, I just started this thing up and just in a few minutes I was all the way across the pasture in the air capturing these clouds just before sunset with that reflection in the pond and that's what I love about drones is where you can't go with the camera or if you don't have time to take your camera somewhere a little further away hey you can just hop in the drone and take off and go frame up a shot and at least come back with something now it may not be the same as shooting a pano on my Z7, right? Of course not. But it's a pretty good little camera and that drone technology is only getting better year after year. I can't even wait to see what the next one looks like. And then traveling, 2019 was a great travel year for us. Took my wife to Carmel, California for our anniversary and I kind of cheated a little bit and used that as a photography trip but um, unfortunately the weather didn't cooperate. I didn't get a lot of those colorful sunsets that I really had hoped to get on the Pacific West Coast, right? You want that nice colorful sunset. Well, I got a foggy sunset just about every single day. So I decided to make the most of it and this was an image I really learned a lot from. This is Lone Cypress and just making lemonade from the lemons I got slowed down the shutter, did a 30 second exposure with an ND, 10 stop ND, and I just really am happy with the way that image came out. I learned a lot about using ND filters when I was out in California, and again, studying that shutter speed with what happens when you slow it down and there's water and there's action. It's some really cool stuff that can happen when you slow down that shutter. And then, once again, back out at Broken Bow. Fell in love with Broken Bow in 2019. So much in fact that I'm actually purchasing a piece of land out in Broken Bow to build my own little cabin out there. So I'm super excited about that. And that's partly why I'm, you haven't heard from me in the last few weeks because I've been busy shopping around for land and visiting that land and getting everything financially ready and squared away so that I can accomplish that little dream. That's a side project. But Hopefully that cabin, if I ever get it built, will give me the opportunity to be out along Lower Mountain Fork and Beaver's Bend earlier in the morning so I can capture more shots like this. This was a pano I got, I believe in July. We went out there as a family, did a little vacation out there, and I took uh, the opportunity one morning to get up super early and beat the sunrise in that summer, which is so hard to do is beat the sun up because it's up early. But I got down to uh, Beaver's Bend and got this sunrise pano as the sun sort of came along the, the mountain fork part of the, the river there and uh, just sort of filtered through the trees. And this was sort of a, a neat little moment there along the, the river's edge that I got that morning. And I just couldn't get enough of shooting that area and shooting with water. And so I started looking on my farm just to see what I could get around the ponds. And one of my most popular images in 2019 was this one of my pond, the lily pads, in the late summer just took over the pond. And it was hot, it was really sort of dry, but a couple of days in the, towards the end of the summer, we got these summer rains. And I noticed that the beads of water almost pooled up like little beads of mercury on top of those lily pads. And as long as the wind didn't chase them off and that pond stayed pretty still, those little drops of water just sat up there and then reflected the colors from the sunset, which I will be looking for that again in 2020. Those kinds of moments where the water, the weather, the lighting, the sunset, everything sort of comes together in those little moments that you only get a couple of opportunities to shoot. But because of 2019, I can now really dial in and expect and anticipate some of those moments. So I hope you'll do the same. And then this one absolutely is one of my favorite images of 2019. I believe this is around Labor Day. The way the Milky Way was just straight up and down over this quince tree 
I tried a little experiment and did a vertical pano where I took the camera on my nodal ninja and made, made it do a flip flop all the way upside down. So that when I stitched these images together, I literally had trees coming in the top of the frame, which were actually the trees behind me. So I had to crop it there. It would have, just been a, would have been a little bit weird. But this was a total almost flip flop of a vertical pano. And I used that over and over again to shoot the Milky Way all throughout the rest of the summer and had a lot of success doing that. So I absolutely highly recommend that you try a few vertical panos when you're shooting things like the Milky Way. It gives you so much more latitude to get up there. Well, actually, would that be longitude? Yes, that would give you so much more longitude to get your camera up and over and capture more of those stars that everybody loves to see. I think I may have sold a print of this one too to one of my buddies, but still, it's a pretty cool image. And then once again, back at Lower Mountain Fork, you just can't get enough of this broken bow. Again, one of my most popular images. I threw this up on Facebook and everybody there went crazy over this image, which I didn't really think was that special at first. It was the first image I shot of that morning. I barely had gotten the sand out of my eyes. I was still sipping on coffee and I just threw the camera on the tripod, got out there early and bam, shot this uh, neat shot of these bald cypress in the fall right before all the color just vanished. This was my really last outing of 2019 with any sort of fall color. I got that image and within just a few minutes later, I went further down Mountain Fork and got this image, which was just so rich with color. I was blown away at the way the color came out of this one. So I would encourage you to, to take some risks. This was what I would call one of my most risky shots because uh, I'm wading uh, sometimes knee deep, sometimes almost waist deep in the water. It's slick, it's rocky, but sometimes you have to kind of Put everything at risk to get your camera in that position so that you can get a shot that you would not otherwise get. So I'm lucky that these cameras that I'm shooting on right now survived that outing because it was, it was very, very slick. I think I was standing on a, a lump of grass with one foot and had my other foot wedged between rocks and I don't even know what the tripod was sitting on. I sort of just kept pushing it around until it felt somewhat solid like it wasn't going to tip over so it could have been on a rock dirt it could have been on a, a otter's head for all i know but it was there so again taking risks and putting yourself up into position to get a shot was something that i learned in 2019. i did a, an incredible workshop i signed up for one with hudson henry i went out to moab utah and this was a position that he told me about Again, one of those that you had to put a little bit of risk in order to, um, to get up there, but this was a perch, which I call the photographer's perch at the windows area. And you had to kind of scurry up a little rock ledge and then slide around and grab onto another rock and pull yourself up and over and down to this little narrow ledge that led up to a rock. And once you got on that rock, there was literally only room for one tripod, one photographer. And if you're there first, then you get to be that photographer. And everything happened after that, just like clockwork. God showed up with this amazing sunrise. The clouds were epic in color. And I shot this pano and was just blown away. I, I wanted just so much width because every single slice of that pano was just as beautiful as the last. And when I put it all together, I was just amazed at how much color and richness and detail and everything came out of this. So totally one of my favorite shots of 2019 was this shot at the windows in Moab. And then skipping ahead a little bit to fall it got fall pretty quickly after that it got cold i did another trip to colorado and shot some aspens in between there but i didn't put any of those in this mix um, but uh, i'm including this image because i got a lot of response and feedback from it mainly just because i believe that purple color just the vibrance and i barely even touched the color sliders at all on this image this was truly how colorful it was this morning Frosty morning, one of those first frosty mornings of fall. 
and just happened to see that color and grabbed my camera and ran for it. So one thing I learned in 2019 is to have a subject that's close by, that's convenient, that you can get to at a moment's notice in case you see some really neat lighting you can just stop what you're doing and get out there and grab a shot like this one and finally again another frosty morning this one was probably the last shot that i really liked from 2019 and this was right before i loaded up the car to leave for our thanksgiving gathering we were meeting our family in missouri for our thanks thanksmas we met them and did our whole thanksgiving and christmas a little early um, but this was a really neat morning i was carrying boxes and luggage to the car and it was cold and foggy and as the sun came up it started to filter through that fog but we still had frost on the ground so grabbed my camera took off out into the pasture once again and just started shooting and I'm really glad that I got out there because this is just, it shows the contrast of how just the difference between that, that blue hour shot before the sun comes up, you get all those rich purple, blues, and pinks. And then when the sun finally breaks, it's this duking it out war of gold against blue. And it's just so interesting and so dynamic. So I found in 2019 that I love to shoot into the sun and I've learned that I love subjects where the light is filtering through and reflecting off multiple surfaces those are the kinds of things I'm looking for I'm looking for fog I love those moments when the sun rays filter down through the fog I've learned a little bit about weather and how to kind of anticipate when that's going to happen one of my good friends, Randy Sander, you know, he made the comment, even when there's not fog on the forecast, whenever there's water, you can still maybe get a little bit of fog if that water is uh, warmer than the outside air. It just throws off this morning fog and you get those nice little sun rays that kind of come down through. So uh, lots of lessons learned in 2019. And I'm just so thankful for that, that I can carry those into 2020 and build on what I learned in 2019. So all in all, 2019 was an incredible year of learning, of adventure, of making mistakes and learning from those, learning new techniques, learning new software, bringing the, these new tools into the mix. I picked up a few extra lenses that I didn't have, got inspired to go with a really long lens with the 200 to 500. I got this little 20, millimeter prime that I absolutely love that gives me that sort of sun star look that I bring into a lot of my shots so 2019 was absolutely incredible and I really hope that you can look back at what you've done in 2019 and set some goals and some aspirations that you want to do in 2020 so here's a Bible verse that I want to bring to light for you and it's John 15 5 for 2020 this is sort of going to be my theme and that is I am the vine and you are the branches if you remain in me and I in you you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing and so for me and our photography and anything that we're doing whether we're starting a business in 2020 who better than to invite Christ to be our business partner? If we're gonna do some investing in 2020, who better than to have as an investment partner than Christ? Now, when it comes to photography, wow, who better to have than the creator himself who created light for us to use and created this amazing, wonderful creation that we're shooting with all the richness and the textures and the subjects invite him in to be your creative director lighting director lighting technician guide adventure guide everything in your photography and i think this verse will help us to bear a lot of fruit in 2020. so what are your goals for 2020 what do you want to shoot more of what have you been afraid to shoot that you want to try if you got any questions shoot them my way I want to thank you so much for becoming part of my subscribing audience in 2019. It means so much to me that you have taken that, that little leap and clicked on subscribe for me. And I just appreciate every single one of you guys. If you feel like these videos are valuable and you like them, 
and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel and sharing it with your friends. And remember to click that little bell so that you'll know every single time I go live with another episode. Now the weather here is still drab. Southeast Oklahoma, we haven't seen any snow yet. I'm praying for one, just one little winter event because I really want to get out there and shoot some of the scenes that I love most with a little bit of snow and ice. You know, some waterfall pics. I would love to go to maybe the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge and get some bison out in the snow. How cool would that be? So think about what are the shots that you really want to get for 2020. Share some of those with me if you want. And let's get out there and explore God's creation with childlike wonder in 2020 and continue this amazing journey that God has us on. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again on the next episode. And if you happen to miss any of my content from 2019, here come links to two more videos. Thanks, guys.